Hey guys, this is Ben from Wild Goose Canning. Welcome to the Wild Goose Garage. This evening, I'm going to talk to y'all about how to read a micrometer. This is really important when you're checking your seam integrity. Making sure your can's closed is one of the most important things you can do when on a packaging run. You're going to need a few things. One, from your can supplier or in manufacturer, your seam specs sheet. Two, your good old trusty micrometer. Three, an empty can. When expecting seams, there's a number of things to check out. Um, and I'm going to say right now that probably one of the most important things is that when you're turning a seamer, A doesn't always lead to B. Sometimes A can affect D or F or Z. So it's always very important to uh, be doing a full seam analysis. And another great resource that I always like to use is DoubleSeam.com gives you a great idea on troubleshooting if you're too thick or too thin or too tight or too loose on what to do and kind of cut th from Z to A to get you the results you're looking for. Again, that's DoubleZeam.com. <clears throat> Good friends over at CMC Kunki put that together, which is a great company for uh, some really good quality seam inspection equipment. <laughs> When we're looking at a seam, we're going to be checking a number of things. One, we're going to be looking at a complete seam. Two, before we ever look at this seam, we're going to go back and look at the first operation seam. Check out another video on figuring out how a double seam is compounded. Anyhow, here on this double seam, we're going to be measuring a few things. The thickness of the seam, side to side. The height of the seam. And we're going to actually go ahead and take this thing apart. We're going to look inside of it. We're also going to look at the cover hook and the body hook. All these components add up to a good quality seam. Now you're asking yourself, how do I inspect these puppies? What do I need to check these seams you speak of? What you're going to need is your handy dandy micrometer. Um, first of all, you want to make sure you get one that is measuring the measurements you need. So, uh, for those folks that live outside the great United States of America, you're going to want to make sure you get yourself a metric one of these. For everybody else, we're going to use this uh, imperial version, talking about thousandths of an inch. Huh. These things really aren't that difficult, guys. If you have the ability to count up to 25, um, you can do this. The other way to think about it is if you can count 25 pennies in, in exchange get one quarter, you can do this. So, let's have a look. I'm going to show you how. Alright, this is a micrometer. What you notice is on one side, I have a chamber that allows me to rotate it over the stationary shaft. The stationary shaft is going to give me a reading or a stationary readout uh, with a bunch of tick marks on it. I'm going to go talk about that here in just a second. Before we do any of that, before you start measuring your cans, always, always, always want to go ahead and tighten down your micrometer and ensure that we are getting zeros across the board. In other words, the zero on our twisty side matches up to the zero here on our stationary side. Alright, so once you've checked to make sure your micrometer is zeroed out, we're going to go back and I want you to think about those pennies and quarters I was talking about, all right? And you're like, what does that have to do with seams? I'm going to show you right now, okay? As I start to unscrew this chamber on the, on the side that moves, what you'll notice is these numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Right? When it comes back around to 25, though, that pesky zero shows up again. I'm thinking to myself, well, now where am I at? Well... If we go just past it, what you'll notice you'll, appearing here on our stationary side is an additional tick mark. So right when that zero line comes back around, we know that our micrometer has gone around one full rotation and that we have 0.025 inches 
measured in our gap. Right. From there, if I'm back to zero again, if I go around one full rotation, there's that zero. It's 25 thousandths. Go around again. It's 50 thousandths. Go around again. 75 thousandths. That's right. I go around one more time. I'm at um, 0.1 inch. Um, and that would be like a dollar if we had four quarters. So, quarters and pennies. If you can understand those things, you can read a micrometer. Earlier, I talked about this number 43 that we're going to see a lot of. I don't particularly know what style end this is on this AMW root beer can. It's actually a crown. It's a crown super end, I can tell you. Um, so, anyways, that, that measurement should be around 43 thousandths of an inch on this second operation thickness, okay? So, what I'm going to do with my micrometer is I'm going to hook this guy on the lip here. I like to hold the can with one hand. I use my thumb the, with the same hand, or the same can I'm holding hand I'm holding the can with to stabilize my micrometer I'm gonna give this puppy a twist all right and one thing that's really important here is the fact that we are dealing with a very soft metal aluminum is not all that tough all right um, and it is easy to take this tool and make our dents or marks in this can wall itself giving you false readings all right so there's a certain amount of finesse to this procedure so um, that finesse kind of goes like this. Tighten it down until you feel a touch. So right now this is a spinning fairly freely. I'm going to go kind of loosely. Now if you watch my thumb and finger here, I kind of use it like a clutch. All right, I let them slip. I'm not putting a lot of force into this to tighten it down. All right, so I'll open it up here again. So as I'm coming in, the other thing that I can do is right now I have a lot of play side to side. It's really loose. As I start to tighten it up, that play side to side goes away. And when it's tight, that micrometer should stay on there. You shouldn't get played side to side. And I should be able to get a reading. And boy howdy, 43 on the dot. So, that is, in a nutshell, how you read a micrometer. Um, see another video about seam inspection or check out our manuals, which go into great detail on measurements of seam inspection. Um, I'll throw out the old doubleseam.com again. Uh, by our buddies over at Camp CMC Kunki, make uh, digital seaming equipment, uh, seam inspection equipment. Um, the other thing here, guys, remember this little critter is a precision instrument. This guy costs about $300. So when you're done using it, put it away, put it in a safe place. Don't lay it down on the table where it's bound to roll off and fall on the floor. Um, something that I like to use, whatever this is so dumb, but. <laughs> A little pull string here. I keep this guy right on my on my vest. And whoop, it's always there when I need it, but it doesn't allow it to roll off tables and things. So, anyways, guys, I hope that was informative. Thank you for coming to the Goose Garage, and we'll see you next time. Ta-ta!